Good afternoon, I'm Laura Skripchak. And I'm Michelle Stewart. Our very own Park Place apartments are faced with some legal difficulties. And CMU faces a new requirement in order to maintain its commitment to affirmative action. Mark Moses with weather and Sal Jocko with sports, coming up on New Central. Serving the Mount Pleasant community and Central Michigan University. With Michelle Stewart, Laura Skripchek, Mark Moses with weather, and Sal Jocko with sports. This is News Central. Employees at Central Michigan University will be required to attend educational sessions regarding sexual harassment. The sessions are part of President Leonard Plakta's effort to reaffirm the university's commitment to affirmative action. University supervisors will attend one and a half hour workshops this summer. These include a video and a review of the current sexual harassment laws and other employees will attend one hour sessions. Affirmative Action Supervisor Angela Hudded said a university survey showed that most people on campus are not aware of the current programs offered through Affirmative Action. And CMU has a new social fraternity. Pi Kappa Phi came to campus last semester and is planning on being a little different than most social, most social fraternities. I had the opportunity to talk to two of its members today. Our Eric Klain and Sean Cross of uh, CMU's newest social fraternity, Pi Kappa Phi. And uh, Sean, as treasurer of the organization, what makes Pi Kappa Phi different from the other social fraternities on campus? Pi Kappa Phi is a social fraternity, but what makes us different is that we have our own national outreach program push. Oh, okay, and you have an event coming up, a rather unusual event that uh, is going to get your name known on campus concerning PUSH and, and what's going on with that? Well, the event we have coming up, uh, one of the things we do with PUSH is f fundraising and the fundraiser we're going to have coming up is, yeah, like you said, quite an unusual event. It's called a scaffold set. Basically what's going to be happening is that our brothers, we'll have two brothers up there in two-hour shifts sitting on top of the scaffolding for 24 hours a day until we reach our goal of $2,000. And basically, that's it. I think it's a really good way for us to show commitment to our philanthropy by setting that high goal and by sitting up there until and not coming down until we raise the $2,000. Now, the $2,000, um, is there an organization that that's going to? Okay, what? Through fundraising, PUSH is people understanding it's really handicapped. And there's a few things that PUSH does. One of the things is obviously fundraising, and p the groups that benefit from PUSH are basically local organizations and national organizations. One of the things we do, or one of the things I do as my job as PUSH chairman, is to establish relationships with lo or local organizations on campus and in the community. And right now we're actively seeking a relationship with uh, Special Olympics and with the Isabella County Handicap Advisory Board. Okay. And so what happens is when we raise money, they're entitled for grants from PUSH to, entitled to get this money from our office, you know, our push office, based on what we raise. So we, we're planning they will get some of this money that we raise, and the rest goes to the national. Okay. Well, I thank you both very much for joining us, and much success uh, with your organization. And for those of you on campus uh, or in the community that would like to contact uh, the organization, you can call Eric on campus at 774-5037. Pi Kappa Phi is working with handicapped students on campus and encourages students with disabilities to contact them for assistance. The owners of Park Place Apartments had their day in court today. One of the owners in Mount Pleasant Limited Partnerships, Paula Reeves, asked Grand Rapids Bankruptcy Court to compile inspections of debtors' records and appoint a trustee to examine those records. Reeves contends attorneys James Bonfiglio, general partner in Mount Pleasant Limited Partnerships, paid some or possibly all of the 20 personal attorney's fees with money specifically designed for business. Bonfiglio claims he gave Reeves all the records she needs and the records she has not released are privileged information. Faculty at Ferris State University will get to voice their confidence in President Helen Popovich. The executive committee of the 528 member Ferris Faculty Association voted Monday night to put confidence in Popovich to vote. Faculty will cast ballots April 15th and 16th. 
The Faculty Association has criticized Popovich for what it said is a plan to downsize the university to 8,000 from the present 12,000. Popovich has denied any such plans. Petitions to recall Governor John Engler should begin circulating by May 14th following the approval of the Isabella County Election Commission by a two-to-one vote. Engler Representative Bill Rush still believes that the petition's language is too vague to provide voters with enough information. Rush also states that the petition was a series of vague conclusions and called it a harassment of the governor. The petition by Jacqueline Schrader of Twining seeks to recall Governor Engler because of his budget cuts and general assistance for the funding of arts and museums in aid for foster children, for programs to help senior citizens to stay in their homes, for program for his reorganization of the Department of Natural Resources. English spokesman John Truscott says that the charges are inaccurate and that the petition, which failed last fall, uh, contained less than 150,000 valid signatures. The committee to recall Governor Engler has until August 11th to obtain approximately 600,000 signatures of registered voters. Although recruiters have been visiting college campuses, some just come to interview students. These companies have no actual job openings. In the third part of the job market series, Laura Martin talks to employers. Hires market and companies are using grade points to hire. I think Central's graduates compete very favorably in the job market. And I think the programs that our students graduate from are well respected. And as I say, I think we do very well in the job market. Our one concern right now is just the state of the economy and the number of jobs that are available out there. Compared to Michigan State and the University of Michigan, CMU has more opportunities for hands-on experience and careers, like this student-run radio station. CMU also has a career library. The CMU Career Library keeps students' resumes on file indefinitely, trying to set them up with jobs. Students can use computerized job search, view tapes on job skills, and find alumni contacts. The center offers mock interview sessions, one-on-one -on -one career advising, resume writing seminars, and files on business, human services, education, and arts and science careers. Resumes should be one page long, tell what's uniquely you, and have specifics. Usually the resume starts with your college and home address and phone number, then your career goal, education, work experience, references, and honors and activities. For cover letters, tell why you're applying, along with academic background, say why you're interested in the position you're applying for, refer the reader to the enclosed resume, and end with desire for a personal interview. The last sentence should give your phone number. Resumes should be sent out at least a semester and a half before you graduate. You may have to adjust your sights somewhat, and I'm not implying there that you should take the, just any job that comes along. But I do think you should look at a, a variety of jobs that might be available to you and, and maybe adjust your sights a little bit. And looking at that entry-level job, while it may be at a little lower level than you had anticipated in terms Laura Martin, New Central. One shining light in the job market picture, salary levels are remaining fairly stable. Central Michigan unions hope fact-finding will end at the bargaining table and lead to a contract. CMU officials appear to be ready to stick by their proposal for the 91-92 school year. In March, the state fact-finder recommended that 350-member clerical union receive a pay freeze in 91 and 92, a 5% increase in 92 and 93, and a 4% increase in 93 and 94. In Monday's meeting, the 150-member su member supervisory union was unable to reach an agreement. The CMU Supervisory Technical so Association scheduled another fact-finding hearing for Thursday and Friday in the Beauvais University Center. And on the national scene, a look at yesterday's Democratic primaries and who really won. And PLO leader Yasser Arafat is found alive today. Up next... This is Anna. She has a lot. She has a mother who loves her and a roof over her head. But tar paper walls don't keep out the night chill. 
She doesn't have enough to eat, sometimes little more than tortillas. She doesn't have the books and supplies she needs to stay in school. And education is her key to a better life. Anna and others like her need someone to help. Could you help? For over 25 years, Children Incorporated has been matching children like Anna with sponsors like you. Your tax-deductible donation of only $21 each month will help provide food, clothes, medical care, and education. You'll receive a picture of the child you're helping and opportunity for personal contact. Please don't wait. Imagine how your help will make Anna or a child like her feel. You can give hope. Write or call Children Incorporated, 1-800-538-5381. That's Children Incorporated, 1-800-538-5381. Goats. This year's recipient of the treasured Black Horn Award, Richard Lynch. Come on up here, Dick. What are you doing this weekend that's so important you can't take a little time to test your home for radon? After all, it is the second leading cause of lung cancer, and a radon test kit is inexpensive. You can pick one up on your way to the lodge. Democratic presidential candidate Bill Clinton didn't surprise voters or challengers when he won primaries in New York, Wisconsin, and Kansas yesterday. Before ballots were even counted, CBS, CNN, and ABC all projected Clinton to be the winner in New York and Kansas, though Minnesota and Wisconsin were too close to call. Paul Songus may re-enter the race, encouraged by his strong showing in yesterday's primaries, in fact, the man running the president's party and the opposition questioned whether Clinton really won. Tonight uh, is a, a major step in his quest to become the nominee of the Democratic Party. This was a huge victory for uh, Paul Songus and a big setback for Bill Clinton. Clinton does have 60 percent of the delegates needed for the nomination. Paul Songus says he'll announce this week whether or not he'll re-enter the race, and Jerry Brown is keeping up with his campaign. And as expected, President Bush racked up victories in the three GOP primaries. Two General Motors executives are staying with the company despite demotions. Lloyd Royce and Robert O'Connell were demoted Monday in a surprise shakeup at the money-troubled automaker. Royce is no longer president, but vice president, and O'Connell, the former chief financial advisor, is now an overseer of the company's investments and GMAC. Another top executive affected by the demotions is now the former head of GM's executive committee, Robert Stemple. Stemple, however, will remain chairman and chief executive. Many observers and analysts feel that any company losing over $4 billion a year, including $7 billion in its core North America, calls for drastic change. Yet, despite the changes in executive positions and massive restructuring, the Detroit Free Press reports that there has not been enough evidence of a turnaround. Striking United Auto Workers at a Caterpillar plant in Illinois are persuading co-workers not to cross picket lines. Union leaders hope to boost the strikers' morale by announcing that Democratic presidential candidate Bill Clinton will visit the plant today. Meanwhile, Caterpillar Incorporated began seeking permanent replacements for the striking workers. An estimated 30,000 people called yesterday applying for the positions. The mystery of what has happened to PLO Yasser Arafat has been solved. Arafat, a PLO leader for 23 years, was bruised but safe and survived three crew members who died in a plane crash. The plane carrying Arafat and 12 others disappeared in a sandstorm Tuesday night, where weather forced an emergency landing in the Libyan desert. A spontaneous outburst of joy and relief swept the streets of Arab East Jerusalem as reports confirmed that Arafat's plane was found in the Sahara Desert. Happiness, uh, comfortable, uh, uh, excited. News of the plane's disappearance brought deep concern in East Jerusalem and occupied territories. Palestinians waited and worried while Libyan and Egyptian rescue teams searched the desert. Arab businesses had shut down. The Palestinians here will make 
everything but. This morning, President Bush, who took a walk to look at the cherry blossoms, declined answering what role the United States would play in his death. An administration source says it was an only says it was only contemplating what it could do when Yasser Arafat was rescued. Arafat's brush with death could have headed off mounting criticism amongst Palestinians over his inability to produce quick results in the peace process. Environmentalists are applauding France's decision to halt its nuclear testing programs. The environmental group Greenpeace is excited about the news because it will allow them to start working toward an international test ban treaty. The leader of France's largest con conservative party says the move could weaken the country's defense as well as the rest of Europe. Some U.S. lawmakers have urged a testing plan, but the Bush administration doesn't support it. And up next, Mark, what's going to be happening in the weather? Oh, not too much. It was nice out today, and I noticed that a lot of people were in the streets playing football, and some of them were out even trying to get a suntan. I'll probably stay away from that for a while, but the rain will move in, so we won't be able to get a suntan right now. I'll tell you about it coming up next. Now here's a few reasons why you should watch All Kidding Aside. All Kidding Aside, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 p.m. on Moore Hall, Channel 34. Currently, the temperature stands at 52 degrees, the humidity is at 35%, and the dew point is at 27, while the barometer is 30.07 and falling, and the wind is out of the southwest at 14, and you can see the sunset today at 815. Looking around the nation, though, we can see that out in the west, there's a few lingering showers over there in the Seattle area. They've been getting rain a lot. This is a lot of rain time season for them, and they've been getting a lot over there. But what we're watching right now is this frontal system, which will be heading into our area. That will bring us the rain that I was talking about earlier on. It'll be heading into our area for probably later on tonight and tomorrow, maybe all the way until Friday. But other than that, there's a lot of nice warm temperatures out on the West Coast. 84 degrees in Las Vegas and 76 and sunny in L.A. Looking over to the West Coast, or in the East Coast, though, we can see that there's a high-pressure system that's been dominating our weather for the past couple of days, bringing us the nice temperatures and sun. We'll be moving off as this front moves in on the East Coast, or onto the East Coast. And other than that, it's not too bad. Because what, what has been happening is the jet stream has been more up north here, and we, as we can see, that it's bringing us a lot of the warm weather we've had, and it's keeping the jet stream up there and making our weather a lot warmer. But as we look around the state, we can see that 
It is mostly sunny over most of the area right now, while the warm spot down in Kalamazoo at 52. Also in Detroit, it's 52. Mount Pleasant, though, with the warmest spot, a high of 53 right now. It's mostly sunny. Uh, right now it is starting to get cloudy, but look at the cold temperatures up in Marquette, a high of only 40 right now. That's probably because of the snow cover they've had in there. The warm air passes over that and it keeps the temperatures down. Sault Ste. Marie still at 44 too. Traverse City even seeing a cool temperature reading of 45 and Alpena is at 47. But we can look at the forecast for tonight. We can see that it will be mostly cloudy with a 30% chance of rain and a low of around 40. Tomorrow mostly cloudy and another 40% chance of rain and a high of around 50. On in a Friday, uh, there's that rain again, continued lingering, a high of 51, a low of 35. And Saturday morning rain, but it will start to clear out with a high of 58 and low of 45. And looking at Sunday, it will be nice though, so we could salvage one day out of the weekend. I think we could salvage the rain for the warm weather though. Yeah, that's true. I'd rather have the rain than the, than the snow, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Great, thanks Mark. Sal Jock was up next in sports. Cecil Fielder had another big day as the Tigers and Jays played in a thriller down at the ballpark. I'll tell you who came out on top, coming up in sports. Indiana, a man who learned to read at 47 is making sure others learn earlier. In Hope, New Mexico, people turned an abandoned school into a thriving community center. In Boston, Massachusetts, neighbors set up a crime hotline that's making their streets safer. From Seattle to Galveston, from Buffalo to Fargo, every day, someone in America is doing something to light up another life. But there is so much more to do. The light to do it is within us all. We only need to share it. Contact the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. Honey, it's Mom. Please let me in. I'm worried. Learn to see the signs of mental illness. Two out of three people who get help get better. For a free booklet, call the American Mental Health Fund. <laughs> you made it. Hey, I couldn't have gotten through physics without you. Yeah, well, you're on your own at college. It's not fair. It's all right. I'm going to get a job, you know, stop working, I'm safe. And I'll be in college in another year or two. So, what are you having fun, Mike? I think I'm gonna go home and make a sandwich. It's okay, my dear. Support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. What a game today down at the ballpark. And if this is any indication of the 92 Tigers, look out because we're in for a real treat this year. Not a pitcher's duel today, that's for sure, but a lot of runs scored, including two monster home runs by who else? Cecil Fielder. He sparked a six-run comeback, but it just wasn't enough. The Tigers fall short. 10 to 9 in a fireworks display. They'll wrap up uh, the wrap up tomorrow night again with uh, Toronto to wrap up the three game series. Meanwhile, closer to home, the Central Michigan baseball team swept two in Kalamazoo yesterday, beating Western 9 4 in the opener and 8 5 in the second game. The Chips even their record to nine, uh, 5 and 5 in the MAC and 9 and 15 overall. They'll play uh, at Ball State on Friday. The dead, uh, meanwhile, the deadly disease AIDS may have slithered its way into the sports world once again. Tennis great Arthur Ashe admitted today that he is HIV positive and has been that way since 1988. Ashe, who is not feeling any ill effects now, says he contracted the virus from a blood transfusion during an open heart surgery back in 1983. The 48-year-old Ashe said that um, he had no reason to go public with this, but now that the news is out, he wants to educate everybody on the disease. Well, the college basketball season is finally over and the Michigan Wolverines returned home yesterday from Minneapolis. Just a great season that ended in disappointment. And while many of you are still saying they made a hell of a run, this Michigan team is anything but content with finishing second behind Duke. 
The Wolves wanted it all but just fell short. A loss that hurts, but one you can bet they soon will avenge next year. Also, when you have your heights and your goals set even a little bit higher, uh, you climb close to the top of the mountain and slip back, it's bitterly disappointing. We made a hell of a run and we had a hell of a season. And next year, all I can say is I know the season will be much better. And uh, y'all won't be here congratulating us on having a good year, but a great year because we're going to win that whole thing. You can bet they will. Moving on to the NBA where the Detroit Pistons are finally playing some good ball. Last night they beat the New York Knicks, a team that's been giving them all kinds of problems this year. More impressively, they beat the Knicks in Madison Square Garden, where uh, a place where teams have trying to find hard to come by. Physical game, to say the least. Lambert taught, taking an elbow right in the chops. It got rougher. Tell you about that later. Meanwhile, Isaiah with the soft kiss off the high glass. He had 20. The Pistons were up eight at the break, but in the third, the Knicks rally back. Gerald Wilkins gives it to Mark Jackson, who lays it in off the window, but the Detroit answers watch the pretty pass from Zeke inside to Sally for the stuff, and then the tempers flare. Charles Oakley, who else in the middle of everything? Watch the flagrant form in the middle of your screen right there on Isaiah. Uncalled for. See you later, Charles. He was tossed, and Detroit took full advantage of it. Bill Lambeer, another strong game. He led all scores with 24, and the Pistons take the 103-94 victory. And in the NHL, the Stanley Cup playoffs were supposed to begin tonight. Take a guess, that ain't gonna happen. And I, I hate to say it, but it looks like the season will be ending. Yesterday, the owners presented their last contract offer and the players union threw it right back in their face like an insult to your mother. These two sides seem to be further apart than they've ever been. And the NHL president, John Ziegler, said an agreement isn't reached, if an agreement isn't reached by Friday, there will be no overtime and this season will be over. Reps reviewed the proposal and notwithstanding the owner's portrayal that that proposal is one that would be readily acceptable to the players. The committee and player reps unanimously agreed to leave it. There is no option. We are not going to bankrupt this league. Now here is a proposal. And on Friday, if the players don't report, in order to have game Sunday, there can be no more season this year, in at least until next September. It'd be a shame to see the uh, season end on a strike. Yeah, that's for sure. And, you know, they talk about the players getting the short end of the stick or the owners being stubborn, but we're the ones that are really getting the end, the uh, short end of the stick. We don't get to see uh, our Detroit Red Wings in the playoffs, and, uh, you know, I think that bothers a lot of people. Yeah, I think a lot of the fans would be upset. Sure. Well, thanks, Al. All right. Laura? Well, get ready, everyone, because another celebrity is jumping into the, the talk show pool. The Fox Network says Chevy Chase plans to produce and star in a late-night comedy talk show. The show is expected to run six nights a week, starting in the fall of 93. Chase says he plans to use the same approach he used on Saturday Night Live, with the funniest writers and performers he can find. Well, Chase is talented enough to, to pull it off, I'm certain. I don't think he's going to have a lot of problem. A lot of funny people out there today. And even with all the other talk shows, he'll, he'll put a new twist on whatever he's doing, I'm certain. He's getting older. He's still a classic, though, that's for sure. Oh, he's got, he's developed so many, so many fans over the years. So I'm sure he'll do well in, in whatever. Well, I'm sure he'll wrap it up good. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everyone from New Central. We'll see you tomorrow. Out of guts to tell someone he's too drunk to drive, but say it because if you don't, there may be nothing left to say.